welcome back. Welcome back. My name is Peter Pilgrim. I'm a Java champion, developer, consultant, principal engineer, so forth and so with. In this episode eight, I am going to be talking to you about Scala, in particular the Mars Rover and implementation of this. So let me have a slight digression before I delve in. Uh, it reminds me of a programming language uh, that I learned a little bit at school called Logo, which was moving a turtle using simple programming languages around a screen. Um, so Logo was the original idea. And I think what it has descended into is the Mars rover. And so it Here's an example of a typical blog entry where um, you are recognised as a Scarlet test, where you should be able to command a Mars rover to move over the Mars planet and give simple instructions. So let me show you and jump to the code. Yeah. So this is the Scala build to... So you can see it's version one. I'm using Scala version 2.13.10. And I have one dependency, which is Scala test. And I'm using IntelliJ 2022. Okay, so let's look at the Scala uh, test. So let me zoom that out again. So I have written in Scala tests uh, with a before and after each and I'm only using the before each to instantiate a new rover and then execute a command turn right and the direction should be facing east. I do this because I have a read me somewhere and I haven't committed it to code yet. So let me show you this. So if I run this test now it should all run fine. So good. So as you can see, the test pass. So let's look at the implementation there. Let me zoom in to the implementation. So the implementation is that I start with a member variable called direction facing north string facing north and then I execute all the commands so I command as a string iterate through all the commands which is a single character do I have a pattern match on R then rotate right and then I have my current direction internally so when I execute rotate right which is this function here then I invariably, I know which direction the rover is in, facing, and then if it's north, turn east, if it's east, turn south, if it's south, turn west, and if it's west, turn north again. And I'm throwing a legal state exception here. So this is perfectly normal, and that gets us through the initial coding test. Okay, so as you can see, I should implement some other tests here, which I will quickly do. Um, and you'll see, because I need to give uh, these, uh, these functions uh, separate, easier names, let's see the failing condition. So I'm going to rotate right three times. So if I execute, this code now um, we should have two failing tests and the failing tests are because when we execute turn right we should be facing west and then if we execute we should be facing north that's correct so let's go and execute these things again excellent and um, and you can rinse and repeat so Let's take um, this example here and so and then turn this into a facing um, left here. So this is going to fail 
because we have not implemented um, the actual logic for turning left we can or rotating left as you can see here so if I reduce the font here a little bit so that you can see what what is going on and then run the test again and the great thing that it demonstrates that we have a failing test here so this is all very well which is brilliant uh, um, and this is how you would demonstratively show a hiring manager like myself that you can code in Scala that you under also understand test-driven development. So therefore you can go and implement rotate left here, fill in the blank here and that would be the end of the interview. I know from this point on that you can competently code in Scala, maybe you don't know all the libraries, but you understand the syntax you've demonstrated here. Um, the four, you uh, each, uh, you, you understand that you can return a direction, you don't need semicolons, and you can create functions. You've okay, you used var here for directions, for example, for example, for example. Okay, let's move on. Okay now, so there is a problem with this original implementation that is uh, there's lots of repeats like and we can use parameterized tests in Scala tests as well. And this is what I've done here. Let me zoom in to just show you what parameterized tests. Let me hide this window for now. So I've got a, a table. What I have to do is include table driven property checks from Scala tests. And therefore I can start to write a, a table or a tabular data where I've got the first column is the command and then I've got the expectation which is the direction facing of the robot. As you can see, if I rotate right once it turns the expected result is east here and if I rotate right five times I should get back to east. Um, okay so the thing that you need is for all which is from the Scala test and it's so straightforward in Scala. Um, with Scala test you just have a tuple with your commands uh, as a string and then the position and it's even so nice to let me just uh, collapse the project window so you can see it all and as you can see I can use the string interpolation to actually say the name of the execution uh, table actual row of data that I want to check in the test it sounds complicated so a picture is worth a thousand words, right? So let's execute the test and, and you can see, aha, uh -huh, this is great, isn't it? So you can actually see here yeah, that um, I'm moving a rover with the import initial result in the final position. Actually, the test is actually wrong. It sh that should be facing, but that's acceptable to me. Um, I should be facing this direction that's what this actually should say so um, nothing has changed in the implementation as you can see uh, here uh, at all so th and that's parameterized tests so let's move on to the next thing